about chapter 22, and it says this, the parable of the wedding feast. And again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who were invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fat calves that have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to, the wed come to the wedding feast, but they paid no attention and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. I'll read that one more time. Then he, uh, then he said to the servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out to the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there were, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get me in here without a wedding garment? And he, and he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and cast him to the outer darkness, which is hell. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Meaning this. This whole parable here is Christ is talking about, okay, this wedding this wedding feast, you know, uh, they say, um, he's talking about the wedding feast, of course, uh, he's talking about heaven is what he's talking about. He's, talking about, he's saying, you know, many are called to go to heaven, but only a few are chosen by God to go to heaven. Think about that. And this, this, this is the whole debate about, you know, free will and, and election. Look, there's no free will. I mean, many people, many people believe there's free will. There's no free will. I mean, it clearly says it right here. You know, this is Christ saying, For many are called, but few are chosen, meaning by Him. Um, you, know, we're, you know, we're all called to repent of our sins. We're all called to, 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 to uh, live our lives for, for Christ, right? Okay. Um, but the thing about that is, the majority of people aren't going to make it to heaven because they didn't repent. They did not live their lives for, for the Lord. They continue in their sins and, and just continue to live for hell but only a few will make it because why because god chose them to make it and god chose them to repent god chose them to to, to live a life for him it's all god's doing it's not our doing it's all god's doing but you know many people are called um to, to repent but only a certain amount that are chosen by god will actually repent and live, live the lives for him and make it to heaven. It's kind of principle as that. Paying taxes to Caesar. And the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in, the, in, the, in, in his words. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you, and you, do, not, and you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their hate, of their malice, which is hate, said, "Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the for the tax." And they brought him a denarius, and Jesus said to them, "Whose likeness and inscription is, is this?" They said, "Caesar's." Then he said to them, "Therefore, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God." Meaning that, you know, when it comes to taxes, of course, yes, we're supposed to pay our taxes because it's, it's, it's what we got to do. It's, it's law that we've got to pay taxes. But what Christ is saying here also is, yes, you know, pay your taxes, but also don't forget to worship God as well. You know, um, you can, you know, you can pay your taxes, of course, and still, you know, you can still uh, be focused on God as well. But don't don't allow money to, to become, um, you know, don't let money take the place of God. You know, make make God your, your number one you know desire. Don't don't allow you know, your money to get in the way of of your, of your relationship with God. Of course, um, that's why it's so important to uh, whatever you got in your life that's 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 getting in the way of God. Remove it because you know, God needs to be number one in your life. Nothing else. So Sodicees asked about the resurrection. The same day Sodicees came to him, 
who say that there is no resurrection, and they asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses said, If a man dies having no children, his brother must, carry, or must marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers among us. The first married and died, and having no children, left his wife to his brother. So to the second and third, down to the seventh, after them, all the women died. In the resurrection, therefore, the seven, whose wife will she be? For they all had her. But Jesus answered them, You are wrong, because you know neither the Scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry not are given in the marriage. Meaning this, there is no marriage in heaven. Um, and when Christ returns, you know, people will not be getting married no more. When he returns, he's, you know, Christ is married to the church, the Christians, of course. So that's the only marriage that's going to be going on, you know, um, when he returns or when you die, is that you're married to Christ in a way because, because if you're a part of the church, then, you, then you're married to him in a way. You have a relationship with him. Um, so there, is, there, will, there will be no marriage going on in, in death. Um, you know, when you die or when he returns, marriage is done. There is no marriages anymore. Um, you know, uh, it's, all, it's all going to be when, when you die, you're going to be with Christ, and that's it. Um, if, you, if you're saved, of course. Um, when he returns... All your focus is all your focus is going to be on, on him and, and no one else. Um, it says, "Uh, for the from the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given into marriage, but like but are like the angels of heaven, meaning the angels are not married. The angels' number one goal is to is to serve God, is to worship Him. And as for the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was said to you by God?" I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not He is not God of the dead, but of the living. Amen. Those who are saved, um, He is the God of the living. Those who who are saved and repent of their sins will be lost for Him. That he He is their Father. Now, those who are not saved, those who, those who continue in their sin, do not repent. God actually says that those that those people are a father, or those people are are, are a are um, children of Satan. I uh, mean, not er mean not everybody in this world is a child of God. We're not. Only those that live their lives for God, who repent of their sins and live, live their lives like I said for, for Him, they are a child of God. But those who continue in their sin, don't repent, they are a child of Satan. And Christ Christ says that here in, in, in His Word. I mean, not everyone is a child of God. Um. It says, uh, let's see here. And when the crowd heard it, they were astonished at his teaching, the great commandment. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all, your, with all of your heart and with all of your soul and, and, with, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like, a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Of course, the greatest law is to love God, and the second greatest law is to love love others. Whose son is the Christ? Now, while the, now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David, in the Spirit, Holy Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, the Lord, to, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. I'll read that one more time. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? Exactly. And no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions, because he, he put them in their place, man. Christ was not afraid to tell people how he felt. He wasn't afraid to tell people. He wasn't afraid to tell them off. You know, as Christians, man, we need to stop being. I must say the word. We need to stop being sissies and stand up and, and proclaim the word of God. And stand up and 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 and, and uh, you know, and start start being men of God. Stop being sissies and stop cowering in fear. You know, we got we got to hit fear straight on. You got to be a man. Stand up for God. Stop cowering in fear, you know. And and, re, and if you got to rebuke people, if 
if you see if you see someone who's sinning and they're not wanting to repent, rebuke, rebuke them until they do, and stop being stop being like a child. You know, grow up. Start if you if you gonna say if you gonna say you're a Christian, it's time for you to start living it, and, and stop being like, stop being like a child. You know, it's time to grow up and be a man of God. And don't be afraid to tell people how you feel. Don't be afraid to tell them off if you got to. It's plain simple as that. Anyway, you know, you can't let people run over you. It's time for you to stand up for yourself. Stand up for God. Anyway, that's uh, chapter 22 and about 23 or shortly.